My name is Frank DeLeo. I am a member of the Delta Chapter at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, I'm what they called at the time a rare oddity. I was initiated in the year 2000. I was 52 at the time. Um, I took a job there as a cook in 1997. Uh, at the time, they were one of the only few on campus that had a full-time cook. I had a lot of time to kill and I got very involved with the house itself as far as repairs go. And I was kind of like a father to a lot of the guys that were there from single families. Took a liking and as the cook, I always did a special dinner uh, for initiations. I have told people over the years that other than the day I got married and my daughter being born, it was probably one of the greatest days in my life to realize that brothers that were in that house thought enough of me to make me a brother. Now, there are brothers in later years who have told me point blank I am not a true brother. I don't know what constitutes a true brother. Is a true brother that someone that is hazed? Um, or is it someone who gives back to the house and back to the chapter? My interpretation, it's someone who gives back to the house, back to the chapter. I have such a bond with so many of these gentlemen and, and I've watched them grow. And you know, they were um, not the greatest people when they were living at the frat house, being in college, I understand it. But they've turned into lawyers, doctors, police officers, and again, through today's world of Facebook, I'm in constant communications with them. I'm watching their children go to school now. I've had the privilege of flying up to New Jersey to attend a couple of their weddings. It's been a very interesting 17 years. What does brotherhood mean to me? Me personally, um, and again, I, I kind of consider myself in a different category than a lot of alumni. Me personally, it's a bonding with new friends. Um, I have resources that if I'm dealing with problems or situations, I can reach out. Um, Zeta Psi has a vast complex of guys in different fields. Uh, to know that I can reach out to them, to come to these conventions and not give a fake handshake, but a handshake and a hug to guys that I only see once a year. I may talk to them again through Facebook periodically, but, and again, this is my personal opinion of it. The networking that everybody has out there for Brotherhood is second to none with Zeta Psi. I retired from cooking in 2013. So I had been there 15 years, and I always told people, um, 15 years, 30 semesters, I could probably write 30 books. Uh, and again, with the bond with, with the brothers that live there, uh, I have one brother in particular who I broke chops with as often as he broke mine. And his last formal dinner uh, when I walked into the dining room, he had on a shirt and tie and a sport jacket, and I was totally impressed. And when I asked him about it, he said to me, I did this strictly for you, to show you my appreciation for living here for three years. And if I'm laughing, you know what's coming. I thanked him and he stood up and he was in his birthday suit. Um, all he had on was the sport jacket, the tie and the shirt. Um, and again, over the years, there, there are so many. Um, I have watched food fights and what I thought was a food fight and the brothers had it all planned where I was the one uh, getting all the food thrown at me. Um, being the cook, I had to make sure that brothers didn't fool with the food to get even. Um, there were times where I told them there was X lax in the chocolate milk, and it became a psych, a psych game, a psychological type thing. 
But totally funny stories. I mean, some of them I can't put on camera, um, unfortunately. But at, at points, um, the gentleman had me dancing on a table during dinner or giving a speech on a table during dinner and not paying attention. Um, they put a string around my leg and tied me to a chair that when I went to get off, I didn't fall. The, the, chair, the chair fell, I heard it, and that stopped it. Uh, many of pranks were played um, where at dinner time, uh, dinner time was 5.30, nobody was downstairs. And they knew that I was uh, punctual. If I said dinner was 5.30, dinner was 5.30. And again, just to break my chops, they did nothing. They didn't even show up. We had an incident where we were having a fire inspection. I knew about it and I told the guys, you know, just to make sure that there were no extra extension cords in the rooms, you know, nothing illegal, but just to keep a heads up so that everything is clear. And I told them when it was gonna be. The fire inspector showed up at 11 o'clock and pulled the fire alarm because they time how long everybody. Well, the guys all knew the time, and when the fire chief pulled the alarm, everybody ran down the stairs in their birthday suit. And the fire chief turned around and said, okay, guys, thank you, and because they ran outside, and they all went back. That's great. That's great. I, you know what? I, I'm very good friends with the, with the fire inspector. And when he saw that, I, you know, it's one of those things that, they all knew it and they were all waiting upstairs. They saw his car come in, they were all waiting upstairs. And the minute he pulled it, they all went, fire, fire, and they all ran down. And he's listening, he's hearing them, figuring, okay, they're evacuating the house. Not one of them had a stitch of clothing on. <laughs> and you have to live in a frat house to appreciate that. There was a situation where when I was cooking, um, I had never used um, fish products, very rarely. And I had a student ask me why I don't make salmon. And I went home and I, 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 I was not a culinary school graduate. Everything I learned was learned from Italian family tradition. I went home, I bought a whole bunch of salmon and I experimented and I was able to serve salmon at the frat house. I had one student tell me that he doesn't eat salmon and I asked him to try it the way I made it. And long story short, about three months later, his mom was and dad were at the frat house for a parent's day, and his mom couldn't understand how he ate salmon at the frat house and wouldn't eat at home. And she wanted to know how I made it. That, and I just explained to her, it was just a very simple process with fresh vegetables and put in the oven. The value of the fraternity in my life personally um, has changed in the last four years because I moved to Georgia. But without the fraternity, um, I don't know what I would do because a uh, good example is there was a meeting at 9.30 this morning and I had to walk out of the meeting three separate times while Locke was speaking because there are construction issues at the house and I deal with those. Um, and again, it keeps me it keeps me busy personally. The fraternity life itself is, is different. And in today's world, the freshmen coming into college all have it in their mind that it's an uh, alcohol party time. And part of the thing that we're trying to instill in the new brothers moving in this year is it's not a party time. There's, a t there's time to have fun. With the cultures of today, with everything that's going on with fraternities, you have to talk to your actives and make them understand all the risk management issues, like no means no, when having a party, especially with a female guest. The alcohol issues, I can go on and on, but everybody is aware. Fraternity life is changing on all campuses. As, as far as advice go to actives, um, I would tell them to, to try to act when you're in a fraternity the way you would at a family party. Um, everybody's going to get a little bit wild, but don't go overboard with it. You know, enjoy yourself, have a good time. 
uh, it's going to be the best three or four years of your life. You're going to make friends that you're going to have for life, just like you did in grammar school and high school. I think the elders today have to kind of realize times have changed. Some of the elders are still dealing with issues like they would have 40 years ago. Today's world, everybody has a cell phone, everybody's taking videos. You can't keep telling actives, you can't drink, you can't do this. You're better off explaining to them, teaching them how to do it responsible. There's a, and, and again, I, I'm being honest, and they knew this when they asked me to do this. There's a drug problem in this country. And I don't care what chapter you belong to or who the elders are of that chapter. They're not telling me that my chapter doesn't do that. My chapter doesn't do drugs. My chapter doesn't do kegs. My chapter doesn't drink. I've been to 15 conventions in the last 17 years, and I try to visit every chapter house, and it's right there. You have to stay on top of your chapter. Being a brother, alumni, member of the Delta chapter, is one of the best things I have ever experienced and I've been involved with local politics, I've been involved with civic organizations. There is nothing like being involved in a fraternity. I, I would hope that somewhere, someday, sometime, brothers of the Delta chapter will remember Brother Bones, which is my nickname by the way, um, the awards I've received from National and from our own chapter all have bones and parentheses on it. I, again, elders know this is a volunteer job and I have literally given everything I have um, since the day I became a brother to make this a better place. And right now with our suspension, I hope that they realize that Frank is the one who fought to get us our charter back along with his trustees, but Frank worked diligently on getting this done. And, you know, I don't need a memorial on my headstone, but I would hope that at some point in the years to come that, that Brothers of Delta, and maybe even national and international, will remember me.